Hello, and thanks for joining us today on Encore. My guest today has chronicled the American 20th century like no other writer. Jane Smiley has taken millions of readers to the dusty plains of the Midwest with her novels and won a Pulitzer Prize along the way. She's with me in the studio to talk about Some Luck, the first in a trilogy now available in French. Hi, Jane. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, let's start with Some Luck. It's already been released in English and now it's been translated into French. You revisit familiar territory here as a writer, the rural experience in America, a life governed by the land. And when Mm -hmm. the book starts, the conditions in the 1920s are very basic, to say the least, for the the family Mm -hmm. who are protagonists. How did you immerse yourself in that world for the research? Well, the first thing you have to do is go there and walk around and see what they would have been seeing in terms of the landscape. Um, But I also have been always quite interested in the history of farming, and so I was interested in how they would have um, farmed with horses, when they might have gotten their first uh, car, and then their first tractor. I was interested in what kind of crops they would have been growing. and it just fascinated me. I was interested in the in the um, the value of the land, how much the land would have been when they bought it. I taught for many years at Iowa State University. Um, there's a great website at Iowa State that tells you all those things: what the weather was like day by day, what the value of the land was, what the crops were, what the yearly output was. So that sort of thing, I um, I read about and I paid attention to. I wanted to be accurate. There is an amazing amount of, of detail. Now, this Midwestern backdrop that you have used before, mm-hmm. it often... Well, it's specifically Iowa. Yeah. Each of the Midwestern states is quite different. I grew up in St. Louis, um, which is on the Mississippi River in Missouri, and uh, Missouri and Iowa are two different worlds, uh, which always fascinated me because they are right, they're contiguous with one another. But then Iowa and uh, Nebraska are two different worlds, too. So that always was interesting to me. And in terms of this rural experience in America, I should imagine that there have been comparisons in your work to writers like Steinbeck and photographer Dorothea Lange, Mm -hmm. the Dust Bowl photographs of the 1930s. Why do you think artists have found inspiration in this setting? Well, it's simultaneous. If if terrible things are going on, such as the um, drought, which wasn't as bad in Iowa as it was in Oklahoma and other places on the plains, um, then... um, it, the, the landscape is simultaneously beautiful, but also a little frightening. And um, farming prospered after the First World War and into the 20s, largely because European farming had been destroyed by the war. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when the 30s came and the, uh, and the drought arrived, um, I, I think my characters weren't really expecting things to go south. Um, but still, they had to totally understand that it was better where they were than it was. But their, for example, their uh, bushels per acre uh, went, would go down from, say, 35, which they might have gotten in the 20s, to 15 or even 11 in the 30s. So that would have been terribly scary, especially if you have a lot of children and um, you don't, aren't, just aren't quite sure if you're going to be able to feed your animals from month to month. And speaking of this question of prosperity and survival, one of the characters in Some Luck praises the possibilities of social mobility in the US, this famous American dream, compared to the limits of the old continent of Europe. How do you think that idea of the American dream has evolved over the century? Well, the two main characters, or two of the main characters, the couple in Some Luck are Rosanna, and she is from a German background, and her grandparents had come to Iowa in the mid-19th century. And Walter, who was from a British background, whose parents had come, whose grandparents had also come. And from their point of view, the idea that you could own your own land, that you could um, do it the way you wanted to do, that you weren't a tenant farmer, you weren't imprisoned sort of in the European uh, class system, that was very freeing for them, and they loved it. And they also happened to go to Iowa, which has some of the most um, fertile land in the world. So 
it, you might call that a piece of luck, you know, that they ended up in Iowa. And then they assimilated, and it, to, to them it was hard work, but also not overwhelming. And in terms of that family dynamic on the farm, everyone seems to have their tasks, their yes. jobs. There's a very clear division of labor. And sometimes that's separated between men and women, different expectations based on gender. Do you think there was a tension there? Well, I don't think so, because there was so much work that had to get done. And the work that the women had, especially in the 30s, such as, you know, um, chickens, uh, eggs, um, butter, making butter, all those things. Um, those things could be more lucrative than selling the crops. And so I don't think they paused, you know, to say, well, am I being treated fairly? Now, um, uh, Rosanna does have a sister, Eloise, who moves off to Chicago, and she becomes much more aware of the inequalities of the world around her. But on the farm, it's so much work um, and everybody has to do it. And so there's a kind of equality of labor, even if they're doing slightly different mm -hmm. jobs. Now, I'd like to go back to an earlier book of yours, which in fact won the Pulitzer Prize in 1992, A Thousand Acres, and mm -hmm. that was also made into a film. It's a loose adaptation of the King Lear Shakespeare Oh, it's as tight story. as I could make it. <laughs> <laughs> that is, of course, for those who don't know it, a question of inheritance among... Yes three sisters, three daughters, are transposed to America, with three women as the protagonists in mm -hmm. this film and three fantastic actresses in the film adaptation. Mm -hmm. um, are we trying to go against the patriarchal narrative here? Yes, I would say so. I mean, I grew up reading King Lear. Every time I turned around, we were being assigned King Lear. And from my point of view as a child, I thought that the two older daughters... Um, Goneril and Reagan were not allowed to say what they really, really thought, or um, they didn't get to have their point of view. Whereas Lear, blah, 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 just went on and on and on and on. And I grew up in a family where people didn't complain. So I found it irritating that this guy just kept complaining and complaining and complaining. I, you know, and after I was older, I came to see his point of view a little better. But, um, because, you know, this play was told, we were told this is a great, 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 great play, and it was sort of forced down our throats, even though we might have preferred um, Hamlet, say. Uh, it, it sort of sparked me. And um, I also wrote a book called The Greenlanders, which was based on the Icelandic sagas, um, grew out of the Icelandic sagas, but set in southern Greenland. And because I had read so many Norse sagas, I saw... King Lear as a Nordic, a piece of Nordic, a, a Nordic fragment rather than say like um, Twelfth Night or something, which was a sort of Italian um, influenced play. And in terms of tackling an author like Shakespeare, were you nervous? He's so well known and so well loved. But we started reading him when we were 12 or 11, you know, so yes, he's, he's well known and well loved, but you're scratching your head when you're 12 and you're saying, hmm, I wonder what's going on here. And so he comes, comes to seem very familiar to you. It's not till you grow up that you realize how important he is. So he seems more like your Uncle Bill. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that you that's have a good to way try to, and, that's you a have good to way try to and understand. That you have to try and understand rather than this fabulously um, amazing, great, godlike author. Well, Some Luck is part of a trilogy which takes us through yeah. the American century, a hundred years, a time of hardship, but also great prosperity that really set the tone for the rest of the world, mm -hmm. in a way. What kind of protagonist do you think America is going to be coming into this new century? We have no idea because we don't, we don't know how our attempt at democracy is going to work. Um, our government seems to have been seized by the corporations. Um, they seem to be manipulating it for their own benefit, only their own benefit. And the, and the responses in the various states um, are quite different. So in California, California acts to, um, to limit the power of the corporations, but other states don't. The, the big issue is climate change. Big issue is climate change. And agriculture has a very important role to play here because if industrial agriculture doesn't allow for 
composting, renewing the soil, then more carbon is left put into the atmosphere. Um, very fertile soil stores more carbon than it gives off. Unfertile soil doesn't. And so agriculture can play a big, big role. Mm -hmm. Now, going back to your literary career, you've tackled a variety of genres, medieval epic and satire, yes. criticism, all sorts of things. Is there one uh, genre you've yet to try that you're planning to later, perhaps? Um, I can't say because I don't know until I start in, you know. So it could be that there'll be some, something will pop up. Usually I, I have the idea and then I get started in doing it. And so, and that's the fun part for me, be, having a new idea. So I didn't expect, you know, I wouldn't have said 15 years ago that my ambition was to write a trilogy. But the idea, uh, the last hundred years, popped into my mind. And I said, oh, I guess that has to be a trilogy because it's way too long for a single book. So, um, the next idea, who knows? Well, we look forward to hearing more from you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks so much for joining us today, Jane. My and just pleasure. A reminder that Some Luck, or Nos Premiers Jours, has been released in a French translation here. Remember to check out our website for more arts and culture news. You can also follow Encore on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Stay tuned to France 24 for more news after this.